Well, this is the first paper to look at um, whether children who live in multi-unit housing are exposed to tobacco smoke. And we looked at kids who lived in that housing situation whose own unit uh, was smoke-free. Um, and what we found was a little bit surprising. We found that the children in multi-unit housing had significantly higher levels of tobacco smoke exposure than those who lived in detached housing. Now this was a, a large study. It wasn't just a few kids. This was 5,000 children. It was a national study. And we had those 5,000 blood samples to look at. And um, the uh, increased rate uh, or the increased exposure level was 45 percent controlling for other factors. So we think the amount that's attributable to just living in a multi-unit housing situation is about a 45 percent increase of, of um, toxic exposure. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, one interesting thing is that uh, we've uh, known for a little while now that tobacco smoke gets into non-smoking units in multi-unit housing. Mm -hmm. That's been shown. But what this study does is it really is the last link in the chain proving that that exposure then gets into the bloodstream of kids. Well, this uh, research is directly in line with uh, uh, research that we've been doing for a number of years on children's exposure to tobacco smoke in a variety of settings. Um, one of the things that um, in my work with the Academy of Pediatrics um, and here at the Mass General Hospital for Children um, is to figure out what are, how are children exposed and what are the ways and the mechanisms that children are exposed to tobacco smoke. So we've always suspected that children are exposed in multi-unit housing, basically apartment buildings. Um, but we haven't had the uh, proof of that, the final proof until this study. Um, a paper that came out in 2009 um, showed that uh, tobacco smoke actually got into the units, uh, non-smoking units, and you know a lot of people want to know, well, but how much was actually measured in the non-smoking units? And it turns out in the highest levels it was about a cigarette a day, as if a cigarette a day was smoked in that unit. And we just had the Surgeon General report that came out showing that even at low levels of smoking, even a single cigarette um, is enough to cause harm. Mm -hmm. So I think what we have here is that final demonstration that we need to then advocate for smoke-free buildings and to try to um, bring that information to tenants mm -hmm. so that they can advocate for themselves and to policymakers. What we found in this study was a dose response. So for the large multi-unit housing, uh, we had the highest levels of childhood exposure. Um, in the attached housing, um, that was an intermediate level of exposure, and in the detached housing, including mobile homes, that was the lowest level of exposure. Um, so that dose response goes a long way also to um, increasing the likelihood that this is a true um, effect. Um, again, looking at the prior studies demonstrate that smoke is actually in the apartments, uh, non-smokers' apartments, that's another piece of evidence. So taken together, it forms a really comprehensive uh, case for uh, eliminating smoking in multi-unit housing. We're talking about apartment buildings, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I will say that over the last few years, many landlords um, have taken the step of moving their building um, to being completely smoke-free. And this is for a number of important reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, one is lower fire risks. No one wants to be in a towering inferno. And that's actually, uh, when you allow smoking in the building, you're putting everyone at risk of, of fire. Uh, so there's an interesting thing here that, um, in fact, people have lower insurance costs for their buildings when they go smoke-free. And there's also lower cleanup costs in between tenants if a building or a building owner goes smoke-free. Now what we have is the health, uh, the health data, which shows that not only are there economic reasons for going smoke-free, there are good uh, social reasons 
in that everyone in the building will enjoy a higher level of health when that building goes smoke free. And I'll say that um, in the past, um, before the study, I'd say landlords had a decision whether or not they would be going smoke free. I think with this study, instead of whether or not, the question becomes when. In terms of the smokers themselves, um, there are free quit lines available in all 50 states. And it's important that as these smoke-free policies go into effect, we make sure that every person who smokes has access to the best available treatments, including quit lines and um, therapies that can help them quit. Well, I will say that um, the general public supports smoke-free buildings. Um, and in, among no one is it higher than the people who live in multi-unit housing themselves. They have the highest level of support for this. I think people um, understand that smoke doesn't stop at a doorway. I think that smokers themselves want to make sure that they're not causing harm by their smoking. And while a child doesn't have any voice or any choice in where they breathe, a smoker can take it outside. And then that's probably where we should be going. And I'd like to just, you know, say that someday um, people will shake their heads and really in disbelief that there ever was a time that we allowed smoking in multi-unit housing.